Hi, I'm Karen, an instructional designer and learning facilitator who's been helping companies to convert live training to online training for about 15 years. COVID-19 has really changed the way that we do business and the way that we teach, so I thought it might be useful to share some best practices for converting live training to virtual instructor-led training, which is also called VILT. And I have some slides I'd like to share with you, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. In the next few minutes, I'm going to go over five best practices, knowing your audience, having an agenda, being prepared, knowing yourself, and engaging your audience. First, know your audience and tailor your content to them. Why are they there? What do they already know? Who are you teaching? Adjust the presentation to your learner's needs, understanding, and experience. If you have a mixed audience when some know a lot and some know a little, use the Goldilocks principle. Not too much, not too little, but just right. If you level your content too high, novices will be confused, and if you're too basic, you'll lose your expert's interest, so shoot for the just right middle range. Send pre-reading material to help novices understand the basics and follow up with additional resources afterwards so that those who want to can delve deeper. Not everyone will read them, but making them available helps level the playing field. During training, involve your experts by asking them questions about their experience. They can provide valuable insights that will be useful to others. Second, have an agenda and stick to it. Need I say more? Tell them up front what you'll talk about and for how long. Be sure you start and end on time and avoid skipping breaks or going over time. You want your audience to get the most out of your time together, so focus only on the necessary information. Third, be prepared. Know the content and be sure your technology works the way that you expect it to work. Practice your delivery and do a dry run, preferably with a few trusted advisors who can help you by providing feedback. Practice until you feel confident with your delivery and with the technology. Accept that technical glitches can and will occur, but do everything possible to mitigate them in advance. Check your lighting, your background, your audio and video, and optimize the space around you. It should be clean, professional, and free of distractions. If background noise is likely to be a problem, schedule your presentation from a time when it's less likely or consider using noise reducing technology. Turn off or disable all background apps and programs on your device, put your phone on silent mode and close your door. Avoid teaching outdoors. Outdoor sounds are amplified on video and can be very distracting. Pets and kids have also got to go, and household members need to know not to disturb you. Fourth, be yourself. You don't have to be perfect, but you do have to be authentic, professional, and natural. You want to come across as believable, knowledgeable, and likable, someone they want to spend time learning from. Create the online presence that you want the world to see. The closer it is to the real you, the easier it will be for you to maintain. Record yourself speaking and observe your habits. Do you talk fast or slow? Do you move around a lot? Do you talk with your hands? Are you high energy and enthusiastic or more restrained and intentional? Do you have any annoying habits that show up on camera? Dial back on the long-winded personal stories, jokes, and anecdotes. That's not to say you can't share those. Just limit them and keep them short. Do keep in mind that overly long silences on video create anxiety for viewers. It makes them uncomfortable because they wonder if something is wrong with the technology. Try to find ways to reduce pauses in your delivery. Recent research shows that live video is harder to focus on than face-to-face -face meetings, so make it as easy for your participants as possible. And most importantly, engage your audience. Keep in mind that your class is not about you, it's about your audience. You don't need to be the sage on the stage, lecturing about what you think they want to know. You're there to facilitate their learning and to be a guide on the side, helping them to explore material in ways that are relevant to their needs. 
The bottom line is that your audience wants to be engaged in the conversation and involved in their own learning. Set expectations for involvement and keep them involved by providing activities, discussions, polls, videos, and interesting visuals. And invite them to share stories, ideas, and personal anecdotes. And finally, make sure that your audience knows how to use the tech. During the first few minutes of your class, show them where to find tools for hand raising, chat, mute, and unmute, polling, and whiteboard if you have those. Well, that about covers it. To recap, here's what we talked about. Knowing your audience and tailoring your content. Having an agenda and sticking to it. Being prepared. Knowing yourself and being yourself. And engaging your audience. Thank you for spending time with me. I hope this has been helpful to you.